Welcome back, everybody. So this weekend, in case you didn't see it, Heritage Auctions had their signature auction take place where we saw almost 500 video games be sold for a total price of over $4 million. This auction spanned over Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and featured some of the most expensive and rarest games in all of video game collecting being put up for open auction. No reserves. They sell for whatever they sell for. And for almost 10 hours of streaming this weekend, I watched every single item sell. And by the end of it, it felt a bit like my brain was melting. So with all of this fresh in my head still, let's talk about the current state of the market and how this heritage auction went overall. This signature auction, of course, did bring us some incredible sales, including a 9.6 A plus round seal Rev A Legend of Zelda selling for $384,000. This is the single highest graded Circle Seal Zelda that does exist on the Water Population Report, and very clearly it got some bidding attention. This Zelda is the highest priced game that did sell over the course of the weekend. Another insane sale that some of you guys might not even believe, we had a 9.8 A++ Super Smash Brothers on N64 sell for an all-in staggering price of $240,000. Smash Brothers on N64, perfect grade. This is the only one that does exist in 9.8. It's not even on the WADA population report because as of March, when the pop report was published, this game didn't exist yet. And you can see the insane premiums that this market still brings to special items. There were four other games that did sell for over $100,000 this weekend, including Resident Evil Longbox 9.6 A+, selling for $192,000. Duck Hunt, First Print, 9.2 A++ Matte Sticker, brought in $144,000. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, 9.6 A++ Oval, brought in $102,000. And Sonic the Hedgehog, 9.6 A++ Printed in Japan copy, still brings in $102,000. And as I'm talking about these six games, right, these are some great results, very strong sales. But three of these games actually did sell for less in this auction than they have sold for previously. And and for a couple of them, it's only going back to April or January where they had higher sales than what we're seeing right now. And this isn't just an isolated occurrence amongst the ultra high-end games. Throughout all of the games that sold at this auction, from the high price points right down to the low price points, you can now find a lot of games that are selling lower than they were at the beginning of this year. Which after watching those games sell and every single other game that did sell, we get to the almighty question of, Hey Greg, what do you think of the current state of the graded games market? To which I would answer, eh. There's honestly no big swing one way or another. The results of this auction are basically what I was expecting. Exactly one month ago now, I made a video talking about all oh, graded games are going to zero and my sentiments on the market. So I don't want to repeat myself too much in this video here. I do recommend you watch this video though if you haven't already as it really does go deeper into my thoughts on the current market environment. I will play one small snippet though from that video as what I'm saying there still perfectly holds true to what I would say today. Of course, there are still tons of games out there that sell for 1,000 plus, 5,000 plus, 20,000 plus, 100,000 dollars still, right? There's lots of games out there that will easily clear $100,000 even in a downward market. And we're going to see that at the next Heritage Signature Auction in August. There's going to be certain things that absolutely explode. It's basically two different markets. Exactly. There are certain games that no matter what the macro environment is doing, they are going to explode when they come for open auction. They're going to be either extremely rare games that hardly ever come up for auction. They're going to be top of the population type games that again will hardly come up for auction because they might only be one in the total population. Games like that are going to continue to be strong. Games like that are going to continue to buck overall trends. If you're holding on to stuff like that, if you're selling stuff like that, you're probably doing pretty darn well. But those are the market outliers at this point. After watching everything sell and running probably over 50 to 100 different comps over the course of the weekend, I would say the market overall is still steady and or down for most items. And that's comparing against known results that we have from both January and April 2022. I'm not even going back to 2021 for most of the comparisons anymore because let's face it, 2021 was a whole different beast. That's not to say that if you're looking to buy a game right now, six months from now, it's going to be cheaper than it is today. I'm just saying that today, had you bought something at this signature event, you probably felt like you got a deal based on what it sold for in the past. And that is a fantastic thing if you're a buyer, that's a fantastic thing if you're a collector, that's even good if you're an investor speculator looking to get into this market. There are are relatively good prices available on a lot of games for you to buy into this market to start up your collection to add to your collection. It's a lot of fun even for myself as some of these games that back in 2021 seemed completely unobtainable are now dropping to prices where it's almost believable that I could buy a copy. I love selling stuff for crazy prices as much as the next guy, but I also like being able to actually add games that I love
love to my collection. So, like always, as long as you are buying and selling, you'll be taking advantage of the market conditions that we have right now. There's stuff that you can sell right now and do very well on. There's stuff that you can buy right now for great prices. So when I say that overall it's steady or downwards, we can really get into the details and the nitty gritty of what console you're talking about, what games, what franchise. And we can actually hash out whether your specific segment is going up and down. But of course, that's impossible to do on this short video. So just know that there are still amazing sales happening at Heritage on eBay on golden auctions. But there is also a lot of stuff that is still falling in price. I don't assume we're going to see some major macro event take place from now until the next Heritage Signature Auction. So I do assume that after that auction in November, we will be seeing much of the same results that I'm saying today. Some items are going to do amazing. Some items are going to sell weak or too cheap. But if you are looking to join into this market, now is a pretty good time with some great buying opportunities. That is all just, of course, my opinion on the market from what I'm seeing and what I'm watching. You could feel completely different. Let me know in the comments how you feel about the current state of the market. I genuinely would love to hear more opinions on this. I know a lot of you also watch closely, so please feel free to share below. With that overview analysis out of the way, I do just want to look at some really cool sales that did happen this weekend on Heritage Auctions. So let's just start off here by talking a little bit more about the Super Smash Bros. 9.88 plus plus at 240,000. What we've seen on Smash Bros is actually kind of insane. We had 9.4 A++ plus plus sell for 144,000 July signature auction, right? Then it came back in January, 9.4 A++ plus and actually still brought in $72,000, which brought us to April signature then, 9.4 A++ plus again, $50,000, still doing pretty well, but you can see the trend here on Smash Bros is going down. And the 9.8 still comes out and smashes, pun intended, for $240,000. Pretty crazy to see. The Resident Evil 9.6 A Plus actually sold very strong. It did sell for a little bit more back in October, but considering that's almost a year ago and how different the climates are right now, Resident Evil held up very well in this auction. The Duck Hunt at 144K is also very good in my opinion. The Excite Bike 9.0 A Gloss Sticker I thought was going to for sure push over $100,000. This one did surprise me a little bit. I think whoever bought this got a great game at a great price. I talk about things that are falling in price coming down and the stuff that does rise in price or explodes. And I really thought this Excite Bike was going to be one of the items that does explode. So this Excite Bike sells for 87,000 today. The thing is that this is a Pop 1 gloss sticker Excite Bike. So now that it is sold, we don't know when or if it will ever hit the open market again, nor do we know if another one will ever be found or exist, period. Items like this don't have to follow the rules of the general market. 87,000 for this is nothing to sneeze at. I just thought we were looking at a six figure sale on this one. Super Mario Bros 8.0 hang tab right beside the Excite Bike here sold for 96,000. I think this is a great sale on an 8.0 hang tab copy. There's nothing really to compare this to because the hang tab sales that we have seen on Heritage have all been for really high grade copies that sold for a lot. But I think this 8.0 copy almost selling for 100,000 still shows good strength in the Mario market. It seems like the trend with Sonic the Hedgehog now is every single time it comes up for auction, we're probably going to see it sell for less. This copy went for 102,000. Back in January, we saw the same print lower grade sell for $240,000. That's a 50% cut on this one since January 29th this year. But again, right, here's a 9.8A plus made in Japan copy, April signature selling for $360,000. If we do see another copy of Sonic come up for open auction in the next couple of months, I would expect the price to go down a bit more on it. Sonic really exploded there for a bit. Even Sonic 2 did. And I think we're coming back down to more realistic expectations and price levels on this one. 9.8 Tomb Raider also finally came up for open auction and sold for $78,000. Pretty strong sale on Tomb Raider. And relatively speaking, I think we're getting much closer to a normal price point that we should be seeing a 9.8 A plus Tomb Raider sell for. Lest we forget that last year we had 9.4 copies in July and October breaking into the $100,000 mark. Right beside it here, we have Mario Bros. 2, 9.6 A plus for 78,000 as well. Which is pretty funny to see here. We have the 9.6 A plus Mario 2, the 9.8 A plus Tomb Raider, and a 9.0 A Super Mario World, all selling for $78,000. Which of these three games would you have for $78,000? I think my vote would go to Super Mario World, which selling for $78,000 at 9.0 A is actually like pretty darn strong. Back in January this year, we saw an 8.5 A plus sell for 66,000. So 8.5 A plus versus 9.0 A, 78,000 versus 66,000. 
That feels like a pretty darn good sale on Super Mario World. Mario Bros. 3 came up for auction, 9.8 A++ sold for $60,000. This is the most we have ever had a Mario Bros. 3 sell for. It's also the only 9.8 A++ we've ever seen come for market. You can see that back in April 2021, we had a 9.8 A++ sell for $52,800. So Mario Bros. 3 in 2022, 9.8 A++ doing pretty damn well, honestly. No, the price isn't up a ton from what a 9.8 A plus sold for back in April, 2021, but we're in a completely different environment now. Still a ton of demand on Mario Bros 3 at the highest levels, despite what we're seeing and the saturation that we're seeing on Mario Bros 3 at the lower levels. Donkey Kong 3 here, 8.0 B plus for $60,000 was an absolutely massive sale for Donkey Kong 3, showing a ton of strength here. And it's been a while since we'd seen a Donkey Kong 3 hang tab come up for auction. Right beside it is Twist Twisted Metal 9.8 A plus selling for under half the amount that the 9.6 A plus went for not too long ago. Funny enough, someone in the live stream chat said, oh, the guy who bought the 9.6 should just buy the 9.8 at this price. And um, he did. <laughs> the guy who bought the last 9.6 for 155,000 also bought this 9.8 for 60,000. Pretty sure he now owns the two highest graded copies that exist. We also have GoldenEye 007 9.6 A plus plus still being one of the most expensive N64 video games and selling pretty darn strong at 55,200 this weekend. And I'm just going to bring up the GoldenEye charts here because we actually saw the 9.6 A++ for 55, the 9.4 A++ sold for 21,000, and the 9.2 A++ sold for 14,400. The 9.2 A++ is down quite a bit since April 2022. It last sold for 26,400, now selling for 14,400. And the 9.4 A++ is down quite a bit, but you have to go back to August 29, 2021. Sold for 33,600 back in October, now selling for 21,000 this year in August. And of course, we still have the 9.8 A++ that holds the record at 192. So I think GoldenEye is just kind of feeling the effects of more of them coming to market now. But with that said, it's not exactly a super high population N64 game. There are only 22 total copies between 9.2 and 9.8 at this time. But eventually this game, and like many other games that simply don't have high population counts, they're going to dry up. And that's when you can see some major movements in the price of certain collectibles. It's going to be interesting to keep tracking what happens for GoldenEye. And it's going to be very interesting to see what happens the next time a 9.8 A plus plus comes to market. There's only two of them that exist and it's been almost a year now since we've seen the last one. Falling just under 50,000, we have the WADA 10 Wolverine selling for 48,000. There were actually three WADA 10s in this auction. Wolverine, Tigger's Honey Hunt on N64 and Eternal Champions on Sega CD. Wolverine sold the highest out of those three games by a mile, but both of the other WADA 10s still got a lot of attention and sold pretty damn high, relatively speaking. The Tigger's Honey Hunt brought in 6,900 and you have to remember, that's a game that even in 9.8 A++, isn't all that sought after, desirable, or pricey. There is still a ton of attention going strictly to WADA 10s. If you hit a WADA 10 on anything at this point, you're gonna make bank. It's kinda nuts. The 9.6 A plus Mario Kart 64 came to market and it sold for less than what a 9.4 A plus sold for in the April signature. This one sold for 48,000. The 9.4 had previously sold for 66,000. This one actually did surprise me because as of the March population reports, there is no 9.8 copy that exists. Exists, there are five nine sixes. I know I saw at least one other big collector say this one underperformed this weekend, and I have to agree with that. A bit of a surprising sale at 48,000 there. The 9.8 A Pokemon Red Rattata version selling for 45,600. We haven't seen a copy of this at Heritage Auction since the January signature that took place, where it sold for 75,000, now selling for 45,6. Yoshi's Island is a game that absolutely did pop off this weekend, coming in hot 85 plus for 43,200. Prior to the sale, Yoshi's Island had not gotten this kind of respect or attention, but we also had never really seen a high grade copy come to auction. Pretty crazy to see, but also I think it's kind of about time that Yoshi's Island got the respect it deserves. It'll be very interesting to see what this one does moving forward. This huge sale right here might incentivize people to consign their copies. We'll see what happens. Right here, we have a gloss sticker complete in box Super Mario Bros that sold for $30,000 in an overall eight. 5, but it's not even put together properly. So the person who spent $30,000 on this 
basically was just buying the box. This gloss sticker box at 9.0 is very likely the highest gloss sticker box that does exist. So I can only assume the person who bought this is going to piece this together with a very high grade cartridge, a very high grade manual, and they're going to create a proper 9.0 gloss sticker copy of this game, which is incredible. That's insane to do on a gloss sticker complete in box Mario Bros. I don't know if 30,000 is a good price to pay or not, but it's pretty damn cool to see. Coming down a little bit further here, we had one of the first pieces pieces of video game art that I think we've seen at a signature auction? The original painting for Top Gun Guts and Glory on the Nintendo Game Boy selling for 22800 Original video game art is absolutely incredible. If you ever get the chance at a convention or something to go see it, I highly, highly recommend it. The original artwork for these games pops so much when you see it in person. Wave Race 64 comes smashing in as well. 9.4A for $21,000. Wave Race solidifies itself in the upper echelon of N64. Really strong sale in my opinion. We also had some early Konami hang tab love here with Russian Attack 9.4A plus closing at $21,000. Hang tab games in general on NES did pretty freaking good this weekend. One that I thought was super cool to see was Beast Wars Transmetals. One of the hardest N64 games to find in general, selling for $19,200 there. Big sale on Beast Wars Transmetals. We also had Donkey Kong 64 VGA 95 sell for $18,000. Big sale on DK64. Big sale. These comps right here was something pretty interesting over the weekend. We had a 9.2 A plus Contra, as well as a 9.6 B plus Contra sell for basically the exact same price. The 9.2 A plus actually sold for $600 more there. 15,006 versus 15,000 flat, which is always an interesting question. At what point does the seal grade matter more than the box grade? And it looks like at this auction this weekend, people were preferring to have a 9.2 A plus versus the higher box grade, but a B plus seal. And I had people in my live chat arguing the other way as well, that the 9.6 should always matter way more. The box grade is way more important, but you can see the results here firsthand. Pretty interesting. Also in the middle of these two Contras, we have Pokemon Box. 9.6 A plus for 15,600. Hundred. Wow, wow, wow. What a sale on Pokemon Box. And this is not the big box version. This is just the DVD case here of the game. <laughs> Freaking insane to see. Another really big one for sports fans this weekend, Jordan versus Bird, one-on-one -on, -one on the N64, 9.4A for 13,800. If we're talking factory sealed, if we're talking high grade, there's no such thing as a cheap sports game anymore. Also going back to N64, Stunt Racer 64 also sold. Blockbuster exclusive here, 7.5A plus, brought in almost $14,000. Really cool seeing Beast Wars and Stunt Wars sell at the same auction. Another item that I just thought was really damn cool is this Resident Evil prototype. Sold for $12,000 this auction, which is actually up quite a bit from the last time it sold back in 2020, which I think makes perfect sense as this is a really cool, unique item to add to a high-end Resident Evil collection. I don't know much about prototypes. I don't know how much they should cost. This one, I think, is just really, really cool. We have another slew of N64 games here selling for over $10,000. We have Mario Party 9.2A+, Smash Bros 9.0A+, and Star Fox 64 in VGA 9 90 for 11,400. Very strong sale for Star Fox there. That one surprised me a bit. You can now get yourself a beautiful copy of Ocarina of Time Collector's Edition. This is a 9.6 A plus going for 10,800. This type of grade at one point was selling for 20, 30,000 dollars. Like any signature auction, there simply are just too many results for me to talk about them all in a quick recap video here. Oh, this is actually really cool. Here's the NBA Elite 11 on Xbox 360. I was hearing this is the first time a disc on the Xbox 360 for Elite 11 has ever shown up. Sold for $7,000 in 9.4 grade. Albeit the grade is pretty irrelevant if we're talking about a one-on-one -on -one item. NBA Elite 11 of course being the cancelled sports game by EA but a few discs, a few factory sealed ones on PS3 did leak out and yeah just a really really cool collectible here. If there is any game that you want an opinion on or you're curious what I thought about the sale price just put it down in the comment below and I can get back to you on it. And if you want to check out what this auction looked like real time I have all three days posted on my YouTube channel that you can watch the whole auction front to back. Like the video on the way out and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.